Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass, and today we're doing another buyer's guide for you. Today we're doing craws and creature baits. The standout creature baits that are consistent and get bit around the country. So today's video, we are talking creature baits. Last video, if you guys haven't seen it, we talked about Ned Rigs. Yep. Giant category, we tried to really narrow it down for you. And today's video, an even bigger category that we're gonna try and give you eight baits that work in different conditions. Mm -hmm. You want me to kick it off? Sure. All right, I'll kick it off. So eight baits, we'll go through them at random. They're not in any particular order, but each one has a place. Let me pop this one open first. This is a big bite. If I can get my bag open. <laughs> so creature baits, you can, you can flip them, you could punch them, you can Carolina rig them, you can Texas rig them. Very, very versatile. So that's why there are so many different baits on the market. But right. all of these you'll see in, in our, our eight favorites, you'll see when and why we use them. Right. So this guy is the Flying Squirrel. Okay. This is Big Bite Baits, Jeff Crete's Flying Squirrel. I'll open up the appendages for you. That guy right there, it's got these two long straight tails on it with little bulbs on the end, if you will. I really got into this bait this year year so if you guys can think back to spring i know that was a lot of videos ago but if you can remember back to spring i got on this kick and really we got on a kick throwing tilapia colored soft plastics now that's just a name of a color but tilapia colors have a lot of blue in them and this spring i don't know if it's just that we latched onto it this year or there was something magical but we were throwing tilapia magic cross swirl we were throwing a lot of baits that had that heavy blue flake or blue swirl in them and everywhere we went we were getting big bites on it so i spent a bunch of time this spring throwing that exact bait in that exact color and just plain catching fish how are you rigging them Mostly Texas rigged, uh, almost, I mean, we did really, really well on the Delta, did well on Clear Lake. I think it, it might've even all been on a Texas rig this time around. All right, the reason I asked is because my first bait up is gonna be the Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver. Now, this bait can be rigged by itself on a shaky head. It could be a jig trailer. You could punch it, flip with it. Right. Very, very versatile, but um, the Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver is kind of the staple for a jig trailer, especially if you don't want a ton of movement. You don't need like that rage craw kind of kick right. behind your jig. So wintertime jig fishing, colder water jig fishing, that dead action. But a sweet beaver is a must have. Again, you can throw the smallie beaver on a shaky head. Uh, you, can, you can punch with a two ounce tungsten through mm -hmm. the thickest mat, the thickest vegetation. Very, very versatile, but the sweet beaver is a must have in the creature baits. All right, my next one up. Now again, this category is so much bigger than the Ned category, it's not even funny, right? Maybe if it's not hundreds, it could be thousands of different creature and craw style baits on the market. So narrowing it down to eight is ridiculous. Right. But we found these baits that year over year are just so consistent for different things. And if one of these sort of jives with you, if it describes a style of fishing that you do, you know that's a bait you can grab onto. Today is the last day, I don't know if you know this, the last day of the Black Friday sales. It wraps up this evening. So we did this because these are baits that you can throw year round. They meet all sorts of different circumstances. Guys are obviously stocking up during the sales. So you can wrap that sale up, get a discounted price on baits that you'll use throughout the year. So my next one, you might recognize it before I even say what it is. That is the Zoom Z Craw. No surprise if you watch the videos that I grabbed June Bug. <laughs> so the Z Craw, I actually rigged this one differently. This is a bait that I throw exclusively on a wobble head, on a, a hinged head jig, and we fish it along the bottom. So rig it up, Texas rigged on that wobble head, and we'll link the different rigging just like we will the baits. We'll link the baits, 
with a couple of favorite colors for each one and the rigging that we use. But on a wobble head, you throw this guy out, let it hit bottom, and then you just slow, steady reel it. You wanna maintain bottom contact. Those tails will be back there kicking and it's just deflecting and bumping off the bottom a lot like slow rolling a spinner bait or running a crankbait along a rocky bottom. It's just deflecting and they just come up and latch onto it. June bug in particular is my favorite color for this style of fishing. It shines for me personally, it shines for me as soon as we get into the post spawn and I'll fish it all the way through the fall. That's the time of year that I like that style of fishing. If you get away, get away from June bug, go to something more natural like a green pumpkin, it can work year round for you. But there's something special about June bug in the summertime. Yeah, that June bug in the summertime, me personally, the biggest fish I've seen lost on that was like 11 pounds. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I had a rough go on Chickamauga this spring. Thanks for bringing that up. All right. Next bait I'm going to talk about, I'm going to stick with the Reaction Innovations. Uh, this is actually the Man Bear Pig. I laugh every time I read that that, that stupid mm -hmm. name, just because I think about the South Park episode when they're talking about the Man Bear. Anyways, where this bait really stood out to me, a couple years ago we were in Arizona, mm -hmm. and we actually had a competition going on. Yep. You know, I think we had a bait comp. We had a time limit. We had a, a bait limit, and uh, this bait. I mean, we we had it. We had sweet beavers. We had other flipping. We had a, we had a handful of baits bait. and a set amount of time to catch fish against each other. And every single fish, and the big fish, ate this bait in this color, hematoma. Yep. It's a black and blue, uh, kind of a iridescent blue, but uh, it's it's got a beaver, beaver kind of style body style that ribbed body. body but you had the extra long appendages as this thing fl falls when you flip this in there and it's fallen these little long appendages the tails are swimming down and these little feet right here kick but for what for whatever reason when a beaver will not work for flipping this bait works the bonus you can fish this on a Carolina rig. You could fish it as a Texas rig on a big shaky head and fish it like a normal bottom contact bait yeah, where a beaver is not going to do anything. It's just going to lay there. This guy's going to have some secondary motion with the different tentacles, the little, the little kicker feet on the side, but that is a winner right there. All right, next up. If you guys are aware of this bait, no big deal. If you don't realize it snuck onto the market this year, this one will shock you. So, Zoom, Brush Hog, not a shocker, right? It's a bait that all of us have thrown since we were kids. Let me get a different one out. That one's warped just a little bit. Let me get one that sits a little straighter. That's perfect. So, the Zoom Brush Hog, we've all thrown it since we were kids. Came in a handful of sizes, but your main size was the regular Brush Hog, and the baby brush hog, right? Everybody threw that. We Texas rig them, the Carolina rig them. Some people punch with them, although it's a little tougher with the long appendages, but you can fish them just about any way. The problem is you're catching fish on the baby brush hog, but you're catching small ones. So you try to upsize, but the brush hog was giant yeah. in comparison. It was huge. This year they snuck a mid-size brush hog onto the market. Something that should have been done. Yeah, it's kind of the same size as almost all of It the really is. Yeah. It should have been done 20 years ago. Uh, it's a genius move. That's that in-between size that they needed to make. They literally call it the mid-size brush hog. One other thing about a brush hog, there is a right and a wrong way to rig a brush hog. So whether you're throwing it on a Texas rig or a shaky head or a Carolina, it doesn't matter. There's a right side up and a wrong side up. If you take a brush hog, hold your finger out, drag the bait over your finger. One way, you see the appendages, they close. Flip that bait over, they open up. If you want your bait to have action and to be moving as you're pulling it across the bottom, rig it so that it opens every time you pull it over something. Don't rig it where it just completely closes up and does nothing. Rig that thing right side up, try a mid-size, and I think you'll like the results. 
I wonder why it took so long for them to make a, a third size. I don't know. But uh, sticking with the kind of the creature style appendage baits, I'm going to go with the missile baits. This is the baby destroyer. Now, it's a lot like, like Matt said, there's so many different companies. So on many. Market. So many different models and everything. It's a lot like the other bait that I talked about, the uh, Reaction Innovations. But where this bait stood out was when we were doing some underwater footage. Mm -hmm. And it really shined. You know, it has that uh, that D-bomb style ribs, if you will. You know, I don't know, 30 or something ribs right there. So a lot of uh, vibration in the water. But underwater, those those appendages just really kicked. They moved looked, when, when you hardly moved it. They right. Moved. It, it looked, it was a standout underwater. Yeah. And honestly... It, it stood out so much to me that I rigged it up and started fishing it. And when like my third or fourth cast, I got like a four pound largemouth on it and just dragging it. This is another bait that you can, you can fish on a shaky head. You can fish it Texas rig weedless or a Carolina rig and just slowly drag it and let these little appendages dance around. It works great. My favorite color right here is called super bug. Again, we'll link all of our favorites down below in the video description. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you, if you can't get your hands on these, uh, both of these guys work very, very well. All right, my last one. Out of all those hundreds of baits, I only get to talk about four. My last one is a Jackal Archelon. The Archelon is a bait that I use for one thing. It's another one of those. This, out of every bait on the market, is my favorite bait to punch with. Heavy, heavy cover, ounce, ounce and a half, two ounce Texas rigged, tungsten pegged on there, super thick cover, going through the mats. That is my bait. It's a, it's a bulky profile. I mean, it's a meaty bait in comparison to some of the others. But it's got some things besides that going for it. So one, it's a large profile. So you land in front of a big fish, they're gonna get it. They will pound that thing. But it's also a very slender profile. No appendage is sticking out, right? You don't have, you don't have tentacles hanging out the back. You don't have arms out the side that as you're going through really heavy cover, anything like that will try to grab on, right? You're trying to get down through and they're, all those tentacles are catching on everything as it's going down through the mat. You want a bait that will just close up and just punch straight through. And that's a bait that will do that. It'll get through anything. There's nothing to catch on. But what's awesome about it is that these two little flaps that look like nothing, once it gets through that mat, they kick. So it actually has a ton of action on its way through the mat falling to the bottom. So you've got this perfect package of a bulky bait that will go through a mat and still has action. And that is why this bait that doesn't look special in the hand has become my number one punching bait. This is my favorite color. Now they have a handful of really good colors, but the bluegill color is my favorite. Another thing about this bait is that the head is solid. The body's actually hollow, completely hollow. So you can rig it. I was wondering if you're gonna talk about that. <laughs> two different ways. So you come through, you go to Texas rig. You can punch it all the way through and text pose it just like a normal bait. All the way through. So it's exposed and then you skin hook it, right? And you can do that. But you can also back that guy up. You punch halfway through and go right up the interior of the bait. And there is nothing in the world that that thing is going to catch on. But because it is a hollow core bait and that outer layer is so thin, if a fish eats it, 100% hooked up ratio. It doesn't matter that the, that the hook point is on the interior of the bait. It'll blow out the wall of that bait like nothing. So either way you rig it, you have a great hookup ratio. But I have had a blast with this bait. Yeah, that's a that's a very good uh, punching bait. The last bait that I'm gonna wrap it up with is gonna be this guy right here. This is the Kitek, the crazy flapper, and it does just that. It has two 
big kicker feet on the outside, two long appendages in the, in the center, and they all work independently. So this is a great bait to throw on a swing head. It has a ton of smell. I mean, it, it, it reeks, honestly. It reeks. But the smells fish, like Kai Tech. Yeah, the fish eat it. So you can, again, you can Carolina rig it, Texas rig it, shaky head it, but you're going to want to fish it with some speed to give it that action. And just like Matt talked about that Z-craw on, uh, on the swing head, mm -hmm. it works great. But again, this guy right here has a ton of action. So summertime, post-spawn, pre-spawn, those times of the year, go with something with a lot of action. That crazy flapper will do it. Slow down, colder weather, weather go with something with less action, less movement. But these guys right here are tried and proven. We've caught big ones all throughout the country, yep. lost big ones all throughout the country. <laughs> they are phenomenal. Can I add one more thing on that Kitech? Yeah. I completely agree with you on throwing this on the wobble head, but I have a second application that I really like it for, uh, enough so that I want to add it in. Mm -hmm. And that is that this is a bait, Tim mentioned how much kick it has. I like to rig this bait on a light wire wide gap hook. The lightest wire hook that I can get so you hardly impede the action at all. And then an unpegged little tiny weight, eighth ounce or less, unpegged so it'll slide. And I throw it under docks. Throw it on really light line, you shoot it back up under the dock. That weight will take off away from that bait headed to bottom, but it will pull the bait down. And the crazy flapper just has so much action that the action doesn't stop. It's not like it becomes a dead bait just sort of drifting to the bottom. It just gets this slow motion kick all the way down. And there is something really special. You know that time of year in the spring when you get out, if you're on a clear water lake, where the bass will come up underneath the docks? and they sit up under there and you can kind of see their silhouette, but there's not a thing you can do to catch those fish. You try to throw something in there and they're, they just bolt. Or just sink down. Or just disappear. Just it, yeah. This is one of those baits that I've had great results catching those fish. Now you don't catch all of them. You can't catch all of them, but you shoot that bait up under there and it starts that slow fall and those fish just come on over and gulp that thing up. It's a slow motion kick, it's a slow motion eat, but you can get some big bites. So that's that's just an extra yep. application that I've really enjoyed that bait for. Do you still throw the four, four inch size, the four four? Or do I, you go it depends on the lake. So like Clear Lake, yes, I loved throwing that size. Uh, on a lot of other lakes, I'll go down to the smaller sizes and throw those, but same exact concept, light wire hook, really light tungsten unpegged and just let that thing slow fall yeah the key is unpegged obviously right um you know that bait fall or that that weight falls faster leaves that bait trailing the weight down on the bottom and it just slowly swims down if you have it pegged it's just gonna rock it down to the bottom and you lose that that slow unintrusive presentation right. On that note, this was supposed to be a buyer's guide not a teaching video <laughs> so I guess we'll wrap it up right there but what do you guys, got here Big old shaky head. Okay. Just one of the options for fishing these baits. Some of these baits, like a man bear pig, great crossover where you can fish it Texas rigged or you can fish it on the shaky head. But if you are going to throw any of these, you know, that mid-sized brush hog, anything you're going to throw on a shaky head, because these baits have so much meat to them, they're not like a little finesse worm. If you're going to throw them on a shaky, throw a wide gap shaky head and we'll link the exact one but wide gap is key so that when those fish get it there's room for that to collapse and still expose the hook point all right guys we're gonna wrap it up there hopefully this buyer's guide was helpful for you a handful of baits for different circumstances if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you soon see you guys